Hello again, everybody. This is Derek from ScreamingEagleAirsoft.com. Yes, that's ScreamingEagleAirsoft.com. That's your online airsoft website where you can go and get all your airsoft supplies and needs. Um, today, we are doing a review, an airsoft gun review. We are doing the review on the super awesome, mega awesome ICS M3 grease gun. Okay, now you've already seen our previous M3 grease gun review. That was of the Ares M3 grease gun, and I will use a lot of comparisons between the Ares M3 grease gun and the ICS M3 grease gun so you can know the differences. The Ares M3 grease gun is a blowback grease gun. This is not a blowback grease gun. Uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what you get in the box. First of all, it is a pretty cool box comes with a little plastic carrying handle like most ICS boxes. Um, I, think, I do believe the Aries one comes like that also, but this one actually has a pretty cool picture of what you get on the inside. M3 grease gun, and it says one to one, operated. It comes with a 400 magazine and full metal body, blah, blah, blah. Okay, they call it the ICS 200, that's their part number. Okay, let's open this up and look inside. All right, you can't see that, but that's okay. You could see plastic to keep the gun in and all the parts in place. Okay, let's turn this around. This does not come with a whole lot of extra frills, fancy stuff, or anything special. Let's see, let me show you what it does come with. It comes with a cool ICS DVD. You can put it in your computer, watch the videos, look at the screenshots, pretty cool comes with a unjamming uh, uh, cleaning rod that is way too long for this gun. This is like for an M16, but it fills the box, so that's cool. It also comes with a pretty cool manual in English, one you can read, but it also ha is in Chinese, so it's in two languages, and it's got a really cool page I'm going to leave it to, and I'm going to show you in a minute. The gun itself. Boom. It does not feel as heavy as the Ares one. The Ares M3 grease gun was extremely heavy. This one is not. This one does not have a little extra piece of metal right here on your buttstock, and it does not have an extra little piece of metal right here for when you grab the magazine well. The size, shape, and look is almost identical. The, uh, the Ares one looked a little bit more like it was welded. This one looks like it is two pieces of metal side by side, push together. Okay, um, when you look up real closely. These are fake welds. Okay, uh, The dust cover does open up. It's a little bit different. It is a little bit thinner than the Aries one, believe it or not. It is just a little bit thinner. Um, this is a cocking lever. This will actually cock the charging handle like a, a lot like the M4 where, or an M16 where you pull it back, you can get to the hop-up wheel. The hop-up wheel is this ginormous wheel inside there. I don't know if you can see that, but there's this huge wheel inside there to adjust your hop-up. If, for whatever reason, your cocking lever gets stuck in the rear position, do not force it forward. There is a button right here. It looks like a screw that's almost coming out right here. You just squeeze that and it'll go forward. Okay, you have a magazine release button right there. You push that just like a Sten gun, just like uh, the other grease guns, just like the uh, MP40s. There's a little button right here on the magazine well to release your magazine. I'm going to pull the magazine out while we're talking about that. This is a high cap magazine. Okay, uh, It's pretty long. It looks a little bit longer than a Sten or an MP40 magazine. Uh, the back of it opens up so that you can pour your BBs down inside there. And then when you close it up, you have a winding wheel at the bottom. You wind it up, pushes the BBs up. You put this magazine in with the hole to the front, because that's where the hop-up is. And you hook it in, just like so. And then you can go to down, spray. Uh, do not anticipate any kind of semi-automatic fire. When you pull, you're firing full auto. One thing I like about this one, the battery is in the body, not in the magazine. The magazine is not a low cap magazine with 60 rounds. 
It is 400. So this is definitely field usable. So you've got a battery right here. If you have multiple magazines in your magazine pouch, which I'm sure would fit in a standard World War II style Thompson magazine pouch. It's a little stiff because it's brand new. Okay, there it is. There is a peep sight. It is not welded. It is metal crimped and pushed down inside the body. There is the dust cover, which I'll open it up. Underneath the dust cover, on the back side, here and here, you have sling mounts. These sling mounts are not welded onto the metal. They are riveted. Okay, those are held on with rivets. Everything is riveted or screwed together. There's no welds, it looks like. Okay, um, to extend the buttstock, there is simply a button right here. You press it, it ex allows you to pull this out. It's just stiff. Okay. So now you can brace that, you can hold this, and you can put your cheek weld in there, get a peep sight, front sight post, and spray. This one you could use. I, I really like this one better. It's less expensive. It's not blowback though. Okay. It does feel a little less durable than the Aries one. This one might be a little bit more flimsy in the body, but when you look at cost compared to usability, this one can, you can, it's cheaper and it's way more usable on the field. Um, I did not like the Aries one because you had to have a battery in every one of your magazines. And when you changed a magazine, you're actually in the process of changing the battery at the same time. And you, so if, and they're low caps, so they were like 60 rounds. If I went through 60 rounds in two or three bursts, okay, maybe not that many, but maybe more than that. But uh, in like 10 minutes, let's say I go through my magazine, I would have to change magazines. So in a, in a game of an hour, I'm going to have to have at least probably six magazines. That means I'd have to have six batteries. Where in this one, you do not. You have a battery. It's located in the body. Let me show you how you get there. I'm just going to take this completely out just for GP. You don't have to actually do that. Let's take the magazine out just for GP. It doesn't have to be out. Right there, there is a twist turn. You just turn it 90 degrees and it allows you to pull this plate off. It's just a little plastic plate that covers your hole in the back of your receiver. You pull your wires out right there. You got your small Tamiya plug. You have your fuse right there and there is enough room to put a three-legged crane stock style battery in there. Um, you cannot put a stick battery in there. It's too long. It's not enough room. You a nunchuck battery? No, can't really fit in there. It has to be like a three cell per leg battery would go in there. So you could get um, like a nine cell battery in there if you had three per cell, per, three per nunchuck. If you understand what I'm talking about. Okay, T to seal it back up, you just put it in there and twist back 90 degrees, it seals it up. Simple battery change. Slide this back on, push the button to let it get past the slots. You're in there. Trigger, large trigger well, large trigger well. Okay, now let's talk about a little bit of specifics on this gun. Um, I was kind of looking through the manual and I was noticing that it gave me some valuable information. So if you were thinking about upgrading it or changing it, it talks about the barrel is a 6.08 millimeter, 229 millimeter barrel. Okay, there you go. It has a turbo 3000 short pin motor. So if you, there's no reason why you'd need to get any other motor. A turbo 3000 is pretty awesome. It has an aluminum cylinder head. 
Uh, eight millimeter metal bushings. Well, that's about all that I see in here that would be, okay, there is a plastic spring guide. So that's something you might wanna change into a metal spring guide, but you don't have to. Okay, I wanna talk slightly or a little bit about the receiver. I was talking about upgrading internal oils, eight millimeter bushings, things like that. Well, first of all, I wanted to let you know that um, the gearbox sits inside here. Of course, you know, you got your gearbox. The battery, not the battery, the motor sits right here. It's facing uh, parallel with the angle of shot. It's not angled down, it's angled straight in. The gearbox, they don't say it's a version one or version two or anything like that. They call it the M3 gearbox. Okay, so it must be a special gearbox. Um, uh, it's, it might be a copy of some other gearbox, but I don't know what it is. And the body. The body is basically two halves, like I said, the receiver is in the left and right side, and it just comes apart with like three or four screws. You just unscrew this screw, I'd probably take this off, and I'd take that off, and then the two pieces would come apart. Um, and that's uh, super easy to get into your get to your gearbox. Um, I haven't actually experimented with that or tried that, and I'm not going to do that anytime soon, so don't look for a video for that. Reading further, I found out that this was an aluminum body. An aluminum body, there's a couple of advantages for having an uh, aircraft or just aluminum body. What you're doing is you're reducing the weight. So that's the Ares one is actually steel because the Ares commented about how you had to constantly oil it or grease it and to prevent rust along the body. Aluminum bodies will not get that. What they will get, they'll get a little bit of oxidation, but that's very... Um, not if you're using it all the time. All right, so having an aluminum body, it, it reduces the weight of the gun. It also improves the fact that you're not gonna get any kind of rust or oxidation on the body of the gun. Overall, if I had to rate this compared to the Ares, I'd give the Ares probably a seven, and I would give this one an eight, or maybe even a nine because of the playability of this gun. All right, well, thanks for coming out and checking out the review on the M3 Grease Gun by ICS. Um, I look forward to maybe seeing you guys on the airsoft field, and whenever you're on the airsoft field, play safe.